Well, hi there. Uh, this video is going to basically start by introducing what a polynomial is, other than a very strange sounding uh, title. Okay, so in front of us here, I really like this graphic because, well, let's read it out. It's 5x squared, or 5x to the power of 2, plus 2y minus 7. Okay, now look at the color coding on each one of these words here. It matches up to what's going on on this thing here, which we call a polynomial, okay? So, basically, uh, we know that the exponent is 2. That's fine. We know that word. Constant is just a regular old number. In this case, it's the number 7 in this polynomial here. Um, a variable is the letter that you see, like the letter Y or the letter X. Okay, that's called a variable. More than one, of course, is called variables. Surprise, surprise. Um, a coefficient is a number. Now, yes, there is a number 7 here, but the word coefficient is referring to a number that is in front of or together with a variable. When these two are together, the number in the front is called a coefficient. Okay, so the 5 and the 2 are both coefficients here. All right, folks? The last thing on this little chart here, or on this little graphic, is it's called an operator. I don't use that word very often, other than when I, uh, even telephones don't use operators that often anymore. But like an addition or a minus, a, a plus or a minus sign, those are called operators technically, okay? And a polynomial is chunked up into terms, okay? So this, this right here would be one term, right here. This would be the second, and this is the third, okay? So if there's three chunks like this, this is a polynomial. It's, I don't know, it's called a trinomial because there's three, but we'll get into that later, okay? So for now, all you have to know is this strange looking thing here is called a polynomial. All right, let's go to the next page. So a polynomial is an algebraic expression made up of one or more terms, okay? So the word poly means many, but it, even something like this, even like a 4x, that is a polynomial. It actually has a name, uh, a specific name, and it is called a monomial. Okay, I think we get into that on the next page. But when you just see one term like this, that is called a monomial. Mono meaning one. So over here we have two terms. How do we know there's two? Because they're separated by a plus or a minus sign. And there's two chunks here. There's one and two chunks. That's called a binomial. Think of bicycle as having um, two wheels. Well, a binomial has two terms like this. This one has one, two, three. It, this one, technically you could call it a trinomial, I guess, but it has three terms. Um, it's definitely not a typical trinomial that you'll see in math. But anyway, there are three terms here. And I hope you get good at identifying how many terms there are. You just look for how many things are separated by a plus or a minus sign. So there's one, two, and three. Like terms, now hopefully you've watched videos already that I've done on like terms and unlike terms, and if you haven't, it, it would make sense to do that. Like a like term, for example, 4x right there, a like term to 4x would be like uh, anything with an x, so it could be 6x. And you could put them together and you could say 4x plus 6x is 10x. But the important thing is, is you're able to put it like terms together to make something simpler, or they call that simplifying. So when you have two like terms, you can put them together. Okay? Right over here we have 4x squared. A like term to 4x squared would be, just give me any number, okay, 3x squared. So 4x squared plus 3x squared would be 7x squared. These are like terms. You cannot put, for example, the 10x and the 4x squared together. You cannot add these two. 
okay? Because one is just an x and one has an x squared. You cannot put them together. Those are called unlike terms, and that's the word right here. Unlike terms are terms that have different variables. So there might be an x, there might be a y, or the same variable, just like here, just like these two, but different exponents. See, this one has an invisible exponent of 1, and this one had an exponent of 2. You cannot put those together. Those are unlike terms. So here we have some more. I'll read it to you. A polynomial is in simplest form when there are no more like terms. It's when you simplify things so that there's no more like terms. You put the like terms together. And that's what it says. To write a polynomial in simplest form, we collect the terms and then simplify them by adding the like terms together. Let's practice it. Sometimes words are one thing, but actually doing it is so much more helpful. Simplify the following polynomials. Collect the like terms. Let's do that. Okay, so look on this question here. And it's okay. You don't have to look for a certain one first, but let's just start with the 10. Is there any like term with a 10? Is there any other 10 here? No. So I'm just going to rewrite the 10 right there. Now look for any more y's. There's one right there, and here's one. So what is 4y minus 11y? Here, I'm, I'm actually going to cross them out as we go. What's 4y? I'm going to circle it. 4y minus 12y. Sorry. There we go. What's 4y minus 12y? Well, again, knowing how to deal with integers, it's another video, folks. It's something that you have to know before you do polynomials, unfortunately. 4 minus 12 is negative 8, okay? And don't forget to keep the y with it, okay? So negative 8y. We're done. We have just put those two like terms together. What about x's? Do you see any more x's here? I don't. So you just rewrite it. What about z's? Do you see any z or z's, depending on how you like to pronounce that? Yes, there's two. There's one here, and there's one right here. So what's negative 3 minus 11? If you know your integers, 11, 12, 13, 14, it's negative 14 z or z. Okay? Now, most textbooks, what they will do is they will put these like terms in the simplified polynomial, they will put it in descending order, which means start with the one with the variable that is the lowest, just like alphabetic order. So x, then put the y, then put the one with the z, and at the end we're going to put the number 10. Okay, so let's start with the x. Okay, and then y comes next in the alphabet, and lastly comes z. And then the 10 goes on the very end. It's a positive 10. It didn't have a plus sign here before, folks, because it wasn't between anything. If there's, if there's, something, that, if there's something in front, you should put a plus or a minus sign with that 10. Okay? If it's a positive 10 in the very front, usually we don't put a plus sign. But you already knew that. Let's do the next question here. By the way, this one's done. Let's do this one now. Um, should we do this one in blue? Okay. Let's look for x cubed. Are there any other x cubed? It's hard to say plural. Are there any more x cubes? So 5x cubed can go together with 6x cubed. Put them together, what do we get? 11x cubed. And cross them out since we're done with that. What about x squared? I see 1 here. and I'm sure you see this too. There's one there. So negative 12 and negative 10. Put those together. And you should get negative, be careful, negative 22. x squared. Okay, those were like terms. We're done with them now. How about x's? Well, there's a positive 2x and a negative 2x. Well, what's 2 minus 2, people? 2 minus 2 is 0. 0 times x is 0, so those two cancel out. We're not actually having to write anything down. There's no need to write plus 0 here. That would just be unnecessary. Here we have a negative 9 and a 10 here. So negative 9 and 10, if you put those together, you end up with a plus 1. Okay? 
in this case, this is already in the order we like too, because if you have an x here and an x here, put the x with the higher exponent, the larger exponent, right here in front. So we're done this one. And we're done this one. Okay, let's move to the next page. This one says simplify, then evaluate. Okay, this is going a little bit beyond what is a polynomial, but it doesn't hurt to practice this stuff because guaranteed someone's going to ask you to do this. So let's start by just simplifying this polynomial. And I'll go back to, actually I'll use a yellow one this time. Um, so 4x squared, there's a 3x squared here. Let's put them together. 4x squared plus 3x squared is 7x squared. I'm going to cross them out. We have an x here and an x here. One is negative 2. The coefficient is negative 2. Here the coefficient is 6. There I'm using the word coefficient for you, okay? So negative 2 and 6 make, that's right, positive 4 and don't forget the x. I'm going to cross it out. We're done with that. 3 and 7, but it's not a normal 7, it's a negative 7. So that would give us negative 4. This one is already done. We have simplified it and we've also um, put it in what we call descending order, okay? You already know about that. But here it says evaluate when x equals 3. So first we simplified it and now wherever we see an x, I'm just going to put a bracket, instead of the x we're going to put a 3 in there when x equals 3. So I'm just putting a bracket and a 3. We are basically having to solve this now. Now don't go 7 times 3 on your calculator. Make sure you first go and again Make sure you watch the video on bed mass if you're unsure of what to do here. But what you do is you go 3 to the power of 2 is 9, because 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 7 is 63. 4 times 3 is 12, minus 4. And just to make this look a little neater, I'm going to put equal signs each time. 63 plus 12, 63, 73, 75, 75 minus 4 is 69, and we are done. Okay? That's how you do this kind of question, and then evaluate. Is that the last question? No. This is talking about monomials, binomials, and trinomials again. Feel free to push pause and look at this and fill it in with your own example. I see. A monomial is just one term, like 3x, okay? Two terms, 3x plus mm, 5. A trinomial has three terms, so I'm going to go 3x squared plus, I don't know, 2x plus 5. You already knew this. Okay, the polynomial must be in simplest form before you go and call it a monomial, a binomial, or a trinomial. It has to be in simplest form first. Okay, so let's put this polynomial here in simplest form. Let's see, xy and xy. Okay, we haven't really seen ones like this before, so it's good that we're looking at it. These two are like terms. You might have been wondering that. xy and xy are the same variables. They're the exact same. So add up the coefficients here. That's, that's an invisible 1 here. So 1 plus 3 is 4. And then, I'll cross that out, 4 minus 7 is negative 3. Okay, what is this? This is a, hopefully you said the same thing, wherever you happen to be in the world. Good job. It's a binomial. Let's do the next one. 3x squared. Um, there's a 2x squared here. 3x squared minus 2x squared is just x squared. You could put the 1 in front if you want, but 3x squared minus 2x squared is just x squared. Now let's do the y squared minus 3y squared. 4y squared minus 3y squared is just 1y squared. Positive. Okay? And the last one is just minus 5 z squared. There's three terms here, people. Three terms would be a tri, whoops, trinomial. Okay, and the last one here, y plus y, sorry, y plus 2y is 3y, 
and 3y minus 5y is negative 2y. We have simplified it, we're done. So a single term is called a monomial. This is stuff we talked about before, but I guess we're just going over it quickly in case you forgot. Um, was that the end? Yes, it is. I hope that this helps. If you need some links to other videos, I will put them right above on this screen. Okay, I hope you have a great day and take care.